Happy Sunday, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Can we just clap our hands in the sanctuary? Do me a favor. I want you to stand on your feet and help me lift up a praise. Can you do that? Sometimes my road gets dark and dreary. 
service is now coming from. None other than.
got into the, the, the music, got into the choir, got into all of these things, and, and everything that I ever known him to do, and I will say this about him, everything that I know him to do, he's made great things out of it. I've always hear people say positive things about him, and so I love him for that, his mother, his sister. Zach sitting over there, Zach come in the door right there, and I look up at him like, wow, you know, he, he, has, he has really, really changed. Good to see you, Zach. Thank you, Mother. Anyway, I'm going to let him do the introduction. I'm not going to do the introduction to him, to him to his, to his family and all when he get up here. I know he can speak well, he can speak for himself. So after hearing a song from the choir, the next voice you hear,
Hallelujah. Miss Rose, you said it best. It gotta be something. If it wasn't a button on the road, it was a stain on the road, it was a mess up with the printer, it was something. So God set it up for somebody to get something out of this today. Somebody leaving here different than when you came. I ain't got no help. I said, somebody leaving here different than when you came. Matter of fact, the truth be told, some stuff is shifting at your house while you're sitting right here. I wish I had some help with this place already. Hallelujah. I am excited to be here. Nikki Hempel, I appreciate you so much for sharing. You shared nothing but the truth. Hallelujah. I remember OJ said one time, he said, every time I come out here, you, you didn't took you have regular bicycle rims on the tree playing basketball. I said, it got so bad, you took a barrel the top of a barrel and put it on the tree said, you're going to make every shot. What are you doing? He said, you must really love playing basketball. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But yes, I'm excited to be here. Feel good. Emotional. May she have some tears. Because there's no place like home. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. And to the angel of this house, my pastor, my father in ministry, Dr. Daryl A. Jackson, I thank God for this opportunity. I appreciate you. I really, really do. I'm normally nervous and all that in the mornings or anytime I got to preach or get up and do a show, but today was just different because I'm with my daddy today. It's a little different. So. It's only fitting that I would get here and be asked to come on Men's Day. I don't to do so much youth and radical and all this other stuff, but I was, it was fitting because it was three men at this church who motivated me to want God in a different way. I saw three godly men love God and have zeal for understanding and studying to show themselves approval unto God. And those three men were my brother-in-law, the late great Raphael Raphael Warren, Billy Ray B.J. Johnson, and my guy, Mr. David Patton. They made me keep a Sunday school commentary. I ain't want them little books they was passing out. I ain't want them. David had a commentary. I wanted a commentary. Billy Ray had a commentary. I wanted a commentary. Billy Ray listened to Black Mountain. I wanted to listen to Black Mountain. I wanted to know because when you came to Sunday school with them, you better be ready. So they challenged me to want God in the way. I said, I'm not just going to be sitting there, just sitting there. It's like 16 men and there's three talking. I want to know God too. So they challenged me. And I thank God for y'all every day. You don't know how much, but David, I've talked to you multiple times about this. But I thank God again. My wife, my boys, uh, I'll ask y'all that's, that's here in the Gaston area, pray for my, my youngest when he's back here playing ball and doing all right. Pray for him. My middle one's on the drums, a bad man. I thank God for him. I thank God for uh, my yellow boy on the keys. <laughs> Zach, he's always been that to me sitting here. I remember when Pokey and Amy would always say stuff like, that little boy's so fine. I said, he all right. He's all right. And I don't want him to get the big head and think he's really all that. Y'all right, y'all right. But I'm really proud of that kid. I'm really proud of him. You're not perfect, but you're mine. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want you to know that I'm so proud because we've been doing this music thing for a long time. Nick, you talked about it. And just three days ago, there was a movie in Memphis, Tennessee that picked up our song. He did the music. I wrote the words. All right. He got, thought I was dated. Hey. But God. Yeah. So when the movie drops in January, February, our song will be the signature song on the movie. Right. Yeah. Only God can do this. I yeah. thank God for my grandbabies, my sister, my nephew. Y'all, God has been blessing my family. My mom, who's supposed to be absent today, but she's here. Yeah. Thank God. That she's here. Hallelujah. To Pop Acker, his absence, that's my guy. And it's Men's Day, so I have to call his name. Yeah. If I keep calling names, I'm going to forget somebody. Somebody going to get me feelings. Yeah. So I'm ready for this word. Get to Job. Job chapter number one. They read it earlier. Very familiar story. Very familiar story. For those that you are able to stand, stand quickly with us. Those who are able to stand. I want to thank God for my mother in law who tried to help me get all this stuff together as well. And my whole family that's here, my friends. Job chapter number one, verse number one. Jeremy, I thank you, man, for a great time on last night. I love you, man. Get there. Say, I got it. 
Amen. In the land of us lived a man whose name was Job. This man was blameless and upright. He feared God. He shunned evil. He had seven sons, three daughters, and he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, 500 donkeys, and had a large number of servants. Somebody say, Job had a bag. He was the greatest man among all the people of the East. His sons used, used to hold feasts in their homes on their birthdays, and they would invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when a period of feasting had run its course, Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. One day, the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. Watch this. Just because you come to church don't mean Satan ain't going to try to tag along. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Dr. Jackson asked that minute. Not, not to y'all. In his head. Uh, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth. When the answer could be, I was in some of the members' cars. I was at some of the members' houses. Okay, too much for y'all. Then the Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job. There is no one like him in all the earth. I'm going to stop right there at that clause and I'm going to preach from the subject or a thought consideration versus declaration. Consideration versus declaration. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Spirit of the living God, continue to fall fresh in this place. Lord, let this logos become rhema now in the name of Jesus. Have thine own way. Be with us now, God. Touch this waiting congregation that there's a word from you and I be here. We bless you and we love you. If there's anything I fail to do and ask, please, Lord, don't forget it in your giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all see how I pray at the end like my daddy. For a subtopic, I want the preach, don't give up. Consideration versus declaration, don't give up. There's a few of us in here, a few of you in here that are just like Job was mentioned in the beginning. You are a boss. You got a bag. You are a CEO. You are a homeowner. You got a vehicle or vehicles. You invest in stock. You got some money saved. You got things going on. Been married 25, 30, 40, some 50 years. There's some middle class people in here. Happy? Where they at? A few going to college few degrees. few people in here have gone to another college. Prison. Then there are those of us that's barely getting by. Which I had a praying church here. Some of us, I heard my man in the back say, some of us been married a time or two. Maybe even three. Some of us are living our lives styling and profiling like Rick Flair. Ooh, some of us have dealt with hard times like Dusty Rose, if you will. Uh, many of us categorize and away sin as long as I sin don't look bad as the next man. Amen. But when God walked down this Roman road week in and week out, he starts somewhere around Romans chapter number three. God, I wish I had a praying church. He starts somewhere around in there and tells us that all have sinned yeah. and come short of God's glory. He said, there's none righteous, no, not one. Yeah. But God considered his love toward that in that why we yet sinners Christ died. In other words, ain't nobody here got room to talk about Right. Uh, yeah. So the Bible says, have you considered my servant Job? Mama Diane, you're coming down the road in a minute. Have you considered my servant Job? I mean, have you considered uh, the men here at St. John? Y'all ain't helping me here. Have you been considering the people of God? We know the story. We've heard it all before. But here it is. The Bible says that Job was abandoned. Yeah. Walk with me here. Uh, he did his own wife not turn her back on him. She said to him, you ought to curse God. Yeah. And uh, the Bible said that Job lost everything. Yeah. Talking about consideration versus declaration. Uh -huh. I know many are wondering, why am I going through what I'm going through? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I wish you would grab one neighbor and say, neighbor, yeah. you're doing what you're going through. Because God can trust you. Somebody didn't get that. I said, grab them on there and say, hey, you're going through what you're going through because God can trust you. Can you, can you, watch this here, 
You're going through it because Dr. Jackson has often said there's three types of storms in God Almighty. Yeah. You're either going into a storm in God Almighty, you're in the middle of a storm, or you're coming after God. I wish I had somebody here. Yeah. I said, tell your neighbor, God got you going through this because he knows he can trust you in it. So stop trying to get out of what you're in and praise God in the middle of what you're in. I wish I had about three or four right now that would jump your feet and clap your hands. The Bible saying, oh, thank you. Because God knows he can trust you. Yeah. I know the cancer was, and for some people it is rough. Yeah. I know the job stuff has been crazy. I know losing a wife or a husband, it hurt real bad. But guess what? God trusts you to go through it. Y'all ain't hearing me here. Some people want to come and give you all kind of hold you and understand what I'm going through. I had to cry myself to sleep some nights when you try to smile in my face. But I know God got a blessing. Yeah. 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 God Almighty. I had somebody here help us here, David. That the Bible says that he lost everything. I know the economy has been bad. And now they talk about another government shutdown, possibly. I ain't worried about the government shutting down because I know who holds tomorrow. Y'all say, he ain't talking to me here. I know, I come to talk back to me, somebody. I don't care what they say on the TV. Every now and then, you got to rebuke the news. Y'all ain't hearing me right now. I say, every now and then, you got to rebuke the news and turn that thing on. I say, you know, I'm going to turn this off because it's too much negative energy in my house. And I will not believe that because this job is only a resource. But my source, come on, somebody. I will look to the hills. I didn't understand about the mistake you talked about your age, but I didn't understand a long time ago. I sang it on the choir, but now I understand that I've been young. And now I'm old. And God Almighty. And I've never, somebody said never, sing the righteous for singing, go and see, beg and pray. I want you to do something as we walk walking down the scripture one more time. I want you to insert your name. Help me, God. Have you considered Adrian Anderson? Y'all ain't helping me in here. Have you considered Chad Mark Wright? Have you considered Franklin Phillips? Have you considered Deacon Richardson? Have you considered Lee? Y'all ain't helping me here. Have you considered Paul Allen Jr.? Have you considered Elliot? Have you considered Tony McClain? Have you considered David Patton? Have you considered Deacon Henry? Have you considered Dr. Mercedes? Have you considered Dr. Redson? My pastor, Dr. Jackson. I said, consideration is good. But guess what? You haven't been declared the winner yet. Let me walk somewhere. I'm going to get out of your way. There's not much to go. Back in February, Dr. Jackson, which brings me, uh, if I count right, it brings me up to eight months. Back in February, I had been dealing with something in January. And so now that we're in October, Technically, it's been nine months. If I had three women in here that would help me here, I need four men who feel like giving up. I need three more people who threw in the towel last week. But Dr. Sid, when you throw in the towel, God, I throw that towel right out to you. And say, it's not the time to give up yet. It's not the time to quit yet. High five of them and say, you can't quit, you can't quit, you can't quit. I say, high five of them and say, you can't quit, you can't So, I need you to understand what you're going through and what you've been in. You get ready to step into a new beginning. I got nobody to talk to me here. You didn't realize that what came to break you. God about to use the catapult you. I let me help somebody else over here. Let me help somebody in the back. I said, what came to break you? Talk to me, Junior Hall. It's get ready to catapult you. Look down on It was sent to break you back. But God is going to use it to build you up. Everybody that talked about you. Everybody that lied on you. It didn't come to destroy you. It came to build you. All right, I gotta leave here. So I was dealing with it, Doc. And God said, You need to go through this because I trust you. I said, God, if it didn't come to help me, what are you talking about? He said, I'm about to elevate you to a level you've never seen before. You don't get anointing oil if the olive isn't broken. I wish somebody would help me here, Lisa. God can't help me. I said, God, I need your help right now. 
He said, you can't destroy yours unless there is an anointing. You can do all you want to do. But I heard somewhere in the old day, sitting over there in them seats, when somebody would do a testimony, they would say, what you're doing is good, but the anointing makes the difference. I wish I had somebody in this place. I said, God, come to help me here. I, I need to talk to some cancer survivors. Is there anybody in here? That's a cancer survivor. Anybody in here? You make the voice. Is there anybody in here? You lost some things. Is there anybody in here? You lost the love one. Is there anybody in here? I can't even tell you this. He didn't come to break you, but he came to make you stronger. Before. 
But I want somebody to understand that the Bible says, the Bible says, it is my winning season. And I need you to understand that you're in a season that you just came and call. I need you to grab one neighbor. And I know right now, they may not want to be grabbed no more. But if they understood the blessing on your life, if they understood the blessing on your life, they will understand that everything attached to me wins. I need somebody to shake that hand up in the air real high. And say everything that attached to me wins. I came to tell somebody that yokes are being destroyed. I came to tell somebody that this is your day. Hey, do you understand that I came in one way? I was living one way. When I feel the Lord, I hear him saying right now that this is my season. Last week he was leaning over there. But I need somebody to understand that he's leaning. I need somebody to understand that he's leaning. I need three of y'all to understand that he's leaning. It was your time last week, but it's my time right now. I was in consideration, but I'm in declaration. And I hear God right now saying it is my time. So declare, I am victorious. So declare, I got the victory. So declare, ain't no devil in hell stop. Watch this, Chase. Here's the benefit, B. Watch this. The benefit is, Junior, 
when they prayed for them, the Bible said he got double. Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all missed the blessing. And you walk around holding the blessing. Y'all, y'all, you missed the blessing. You missed the blessing. You missed the blessing. You walk around holding the blessing. Some of y'all sit down. I don't really know. I, I got to get that right note. You ain't got to go get that right. Just pray for him right now. The Bible said he interceded for them. And when he interceded for them, he got double. The Bible said he got twice as much. So everything you trying to take from me, that's why he's always saying, every time I turn around, he's up to something. Every time I turn around, he's doing something. Every time I turn around, he's up to something. Because in my time, I know I got hit up here. I got hit. Guess what? I love you. I love y'all. Ain't gonna open my eyes. Somebody open it up and say, I love. I love my head. I don't want to say it, but I love.
I'm at home. We're going to do it the right way. I'll make sure I make the call. But I know my pastor will make it. But there may be somebody, before we get into any of that, I want to make sure I don't leave it because I know how he can do it. There's somebody here, you're in a, you're in a crisis. You're in a crisis. And you know God has called you to hire. But you've been holding on something that you thought you would have been able to let go a long time ago, but you're still holding it. And you're missing the next level status. Some of y'all, millionaire status. Somebody, those, two of y'all are going to see You're missing an opportunity that God's going to walk you into something that you should have been in a while ago. But God's timing is perfect. But I'm telling you, you should come down to this altar and release it all. God, I ain't going back with that no more. I'm not going back with that hurt on me. Don't worry about who's around you, who's looking at you, what they might say. I'm not okay with Don't worry about them. Learn to be okay with folk not being okay with your okay. That's all right. But you should come and release that. Now, I don't want nobody to know how I was, but it's still feeling that way. Release it at the altar. There's breakthrough. That's freedom. That's peace. That's joy. God going to restore some things when you come. He's going to restore some things. Folk that left you for day, they're going to have to look at something. He's going to restore some things. So I challenge you right now. I challenge you. Praise God. I challenge you. Come on to my family curses. Some stuff that should have been broken years ago. Come on. You know you should have been out of that thing. I, I don't even want to feel like this. I'm tired of going around. I barely, I barely talk to them because the truth is I really ain't feeling them. But I, look, look at this. I'm, I'm showing up at functions. I'm even showing up at, in the house. In the house of the Lord. Red thing is still on my shoulders. And it happened 10, 15 years ago. But we come and we wear the mask. And we act like because we're on the choir. Or we in position. It's just all right. Nobody else may see it, but God knows. And then there's going to come a day in time, preacher, Reagan, there's going to come a day in time when God going to just expose it. I knew it when I knew the whole time. I was trying to give you grace over it. Thank God for the mercies and limitations. Thank God. That each morning, thank God. He know we're going to keep tearing it up. Thank you for those that's moving. Thank you. That's the more that want to move. And I want nobody to know I'm feeling this way. Get it off your shoulders and live your best life. Because today you're walking into a brand new place. I'm telling you, your address may be what it is when you left, but I'm telling you, your whole house is shifting now. Those of you that come up here, you don't know some stuff that's shifting right now in your favor. While you're here, things are happening. Things that weren't on the way, it's on the way now. There, there you go, Zach. There you go. There you go. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There, we, the altar's open because we want to make sure that in St. John, the altar is open for salvation. We want to make sure everybody knows that. You want to give your life to Christ? We have the Roman road. You want to rededicate? Come on. You want to join this great ministry? Come on. Let it be known when you get up here to these offices. Come on. The altar is open. This should not be a place we can't get to. Look at this, watch this. There's about a few with some cuz love you. There's about two or three of y'all that watch this part of the altar. Somebody need to come and kneel at it. I don't know who it is. I don't know who I'm, I don't know who I'm talking to. There's about two or three of y'all that come and kneel at the altar. Because you need God on that level. I, I gotta release this. I can't, I ain't even going back with this no more. I'm not even, I promise I'm not going, I'm not picking it up. I'm not walking out of this church like this. I'm not walking out of this church like this again. I'm not walking out feeling this way. I'm not walking out smiling at folk when I'm really destroyed on the inside. Come on. Come on, come on. I see you. Come on. Come on. I, come on. I put my arms right. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come to me now. Come on. Come on. Come on. I see you. Come that way. I'll get right to you. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. Yes, sir. Come on. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it in the stand. Come to me. Come right here. Good God. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
Will you say to your word, you will supply our every need. For it is in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Blessed Holy Ghost. And the redeemed of the Lord say amen. 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 And amen. I know some of you can't hug and won't hug because of this. This is it. But those that can put their hands on someone, encourage somebody to go back to your seat.
there's a barrel at the by the pastor study and bring individual wrapped candy and put in that barrel uh, so we can give it out for our trunk or treat on October the 31st. service today and you like what you've heard and maybe you want to contribute or be a giver you might want to support our ministry here because how many know everything you do there's a cost yes, sir. attached to it and God already knows there's a cost and one thing about God God has, he got the cost he got the cost maker he got the money for the cost and all he wants you to do is use what little he has given you and so he can give you some more. But if you're good stewards over what he's given you, he'll bless you with more. And, and, and this is a fertile ground to give to. You, you, you can give by PayPal. You can give by Givelify. And you might even say, well, I'm going to write a check. You can write a check and make it out to St. John Missionary Baptist Church. 1282 Bradford Bradford Heights Bradford Heights Road Gastonia North Carolina 28054 and send it in that way and listen at the end of the year if you need a tax write off we are we are we have been honored to be able to have a tax write-off from the federal government. So you can get a tax write-off of what you have given to this church, to this ministry. And I want you to be the salt of the earth. And to help us to be the salt of the earth. All of us work together for one common cause. That's to build up the kingdom of God. And, and don't think, you say, well I would give my little bit but my little bit is not enough. No. Whatever God places on your heart to give, you give that. And God will do the rest. Amen. Don't, ever, don't ever say your little bit's too little. No, it's never too little. Whatever you give, God will bless it. But time has come and time is gone. And I will see you next week. Same time, same place. Come and be a part of this service. Thank you. To God be the glory.